25 years ago, it was a lot different than it is today. Uh, there were fewer companies that were doing DNA testing. Uh, the company I was with then, Life Codes Corporation, was one of the major commercial companies doing forensic testing as well as paternity. When I started at Life Codes in 1982, one of the charges was to develop DNA testing for identification. At that time, there wasn't anything. Everyone, well, I say most scientists realized that DNA was unique, but whether or not you could tease out those differences uh, between people or not really remained to be seen. Having testified in the first case that involved DNA technology, uh, I can I can say it was it was scary. Um, being uh, an academic uh, going into this, I didn't really know what to expect. This was before CSI, before you know people kind of took DNA for granted. Uh, every case that we did early on was really one that generated a lot of media attention. So there was generally someone there following the, the case. When DNA testimony came on, uh, they were recording it, they were asking questions afterwards. It was, uh, it was pretty intense. When I first got involved with DNA testing, it was the old-fashioned methodology called RFLP testing. Uh, that's not done anymore. That's been replaced by PCR analysis using different markers. And that was really uh, a game changer in terms of what you could do, uh, what kind of samples you could test, uh, what kind of results you could get. I think now we're looking at expanding that even beyond that kind of testing, the SDR testing, looking at methodologies using sequence technology, looking at uh, SNP technology, and I think it's going to play a big role in forensics going forward.